Sri Lanka is building a $15 billion artificial island, hoping to transform its economy. Colombo Port City is designed to be a global financial hub, but will it bring prosperity or create new problems? In this video, we'll explore how it was built, its potential benefits and the risks involved. First, let's take a look at what this artificial island really is. Colombo Port City is a $15 billion artificial island being built off the coast of Sri Lanka's capital Colombo. This massive land reclamation project aims to transform 269 hectares of ocean into a futuristic financial and business hub. Once completed, it is expected to become Sri Lanka's version of Dubai or Singapore, attracting international visitors, businesses and tourists. The idea behind Colombo Port City is to create a modern urban center that boosts Sri Lanka's economy. The project includes plans for skyscrapers, luxury housing, shopping malls and entertainment venues. It will also have a marina, green spaces and a high-tech financial district, making it a key business destination in South Asia. Developers hope that companies from around the world will set up offices here, bringing jobs and investment into Sri Lanka. One of the most ambitious aspects of the project is its land reclamation process. Engineers are using sand and other materials to extend Colombo's coastline, creating entirely new land where there was once only water. Massive sea walls are being built to protect the city from rising tides and storms, ensuring that the development remains safe in the long run. The government has marked Colombo Port City as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to transform Sri Lanka's economy. By providing tax breaks, modern infrastructure and business-friendly policies, officials hope to make the city attractive to global investors. If successful, it could reshape Sri Lanka's financial landscape and establish Colombo as a major international business hub. However, building an island from scratch comes with challenges. Environmentalists have raised concerns about the impact on marine life and coastal ecosystems, while local fishing communities worry about losing access to a traditional fishing grounds. Additionally, some critics argue that the project benefits foreign investors more than ordinary Sri Lankans. Despite these concerns, construction continues at a rapid pace, with key sections of the city expected to be completed in the next decade. The ambition behind Colombo Port City is clear. It's a bold attempt to redefine Sri Lanka's future and elevate its status on the global stage. This island is impressive, but why did Sri Lanka decide to build it? Sri Lanka is facing one of the worst economic crises in its history. The country has struggled with rising debts, a decline in tourism and financial instability, making it difficult to recover and grow. With mounting economic pressures, the government is turning to an ambitious solution. Colombo Port City One of the biggest reasons for this project is Sri Lanka's debt crisis. The country owns billions of foreign lenders and its ability to repay these debts has been severely weakened. Years of borrowing, poor financial management and economic missteps have led to inflation, a weakening currency and shortages of essential goods. The government sees Colombo Port City as a way to attract foreign investment, bring in much-needed revenue and help stabilize the economy. If successful, the project could generate billions in business activities and boost investor confidence in Sri Lanka's financial system. Another challenge Sri Lanka faces is the decline in tourism. For years, tourism was one of the country's biggest industries, bringing in foreign currency and creating jobs. However, political instability, the 2019 Easter bombings and the COVID-19 pandemic caused a sharp drop in tourist activity. The government hopes that Colombo Port City, with its luxury hotels, casinos and entertainment districts, will attract high-end tourists and investors, giving the economy a much-needed boost. Beyond tourism, financial instability remains a key issue. The country's economy is heavily dependent on agriculture and traditional industries, which have been struggling in recent years. By creating a new financial district with tax incentives and world-class infrastructure, Sri Lanka hopes to position itself as a regional business hub, competing with cities like Singapore and Dubai. The project aims to attract global corporations, banks and tech firms, creating thousands of jobs in finance, real estate and tourism. In addition to foreign investment, the government also sees Colombo Port City as a way to increase trade, positioned along major international shipping routes. Sri Lanka has the potential to become a key player in global trade. The artificial island's deep water port and business-friendly policies could encourage more trade and shipping activity, benefiting the entire region. Officials believe that turning Colombo into a global trading center will strengthen the country's economic standing and reduce its reliance on foreign loans. 
However, the success of Colombo Port City is far from guaranteed. Attracting investors, maintaining transparency and ensuring long-term growth remain major challenges. The government is betting that this project will help the country recover, but many remain skeptical. But turning this vision into reality has not been easy. Building an artificial island is no easy task, and Colombo Port City has faced many obstacles since construction began. Transforming a section of the ocean into a thriving financial hub requires advanced engineering, enormous financial resources, and careful environmental planning. From land reclamation to economic concerns, this $15 billion mega project has encountered numerous challenges. One of the biggest engineering challenges is land reclamation. The process of creating new land by filling shallow coastline waters with sand and rock. To build Colombo Port City, engineers dredged millions of tons of sand from the ocean floor and deposited it along the coastline of Colombo. However, reclaimed land is often unstable, requiring additional reinforcement to prevent sinking or erosion. Special sea walls and flood barriers had to be constructed to protect the island from rising sea levels and storm. Additionally, strict safety measures were needed to ensure that nearby structures, including Colombo's existing harbor, were not affected by the new development. Apart from technical difficulties, the project has also faced financial hurdles. Constructing a city from scratch in the ocean is extremely expensive. The original budget of $15 billion may increase due to unforeseen costs, inflation and construction delays. Maintaining the island's infrastructure, including roads, sewage systems, and water supply, will also require ongoing investment. For a country like Sri Lanka, which is already facing a debt crisis, critics argue that this level of spending is risky. If the project doesn't generate the expected economic returns, it could become a financial burden rather than a solution. Another major challenge is the environmental impact. Large-scale dredging and land reclamation can cause serious harm to marine ecosystems. Extracting sand from the ocean floor disrupts marine habitats, affecting fish populations. Environmental groups have raised concerns that changes in water currents caused by the new island could lead to increased coastal erosion, threatening nearby beaches and natural ecosystems. Additionally, some experts warn that the reclaimed land may be vulnerable to rising sea levels, making it difficult to sustain the project in the long run. The project has also deeply affected local fishing communities. Many fishermen rely on the waters around Colombo for their livelihood, but the massive construction work has disrupted fishing areas. Some fishermen have reported a decline in fish populations, forcing them to travel farther out to sea, increasing costs and making their jobs harder. There are also concerns that once the project is completed, access to traditional fishing grounds may be restricted, further hurting those who depend on the oceans for income. While officials have promised compensation and alternative job opportunities, many fishermen remain skeptical. Additionally, construction delays have slowed progress. The project began in 2014 but was temporarily halted due to regulatory issues and political concerns. Questions about environmental approvals, legal agreements and financial transparency have caused delays, pushing back completion dates, with shifting governments and economic instability. There is always a risk that political challenge could further complicate the project's timeline. Despite these challenges, Sri Lanka is pushing forward. But who is really funding this project? Colombo Port is one of Sri Lanka's most ambitious projects, and much of it's being funded by China. The artificial island is a key part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, a global infrastructure strategy aimed at expanding China's influence by investing in major projects worldwide. Through this initiative, China has provided billions of dollars to develop Sri Lanka's infrastructure, including highways, ports, and now Colombo Port City. But while this investment brings opportunities, it also raises serious concerns. Supporters of the project argue that China's involvement is a lifeline for Sri Lanka. The country has been struggling with a deep economic crisis, high levels of debt, and declining tourism. Colombo Port City is seen as a way to attract foreign businesses, create jobs, and turn Sri Lanka into a major financial hub. The Chinese-backed developers have promised world-class infrastructure, tax incentives for investors, and a boost to the local economy. Many hope that, like Dubai or Singapore, Colombo can transform into a global business center, bringing in much-needed revenue and strengthening Sri Lanka's position in international trade. However, critics fear that Sri Lanka is becoming too dependent on Chinese funding, which could lead to serious long-term consequences. The biggest concern is the risk of falling into a debt trap, 
a situation where a country takes on massive loans that it struggles to repay. This is not just a hypothetical fear. In 2017, Sri Lanka had to lease its Hamba Tora port to China for 99 years after failing to repay its debt. Many worry that something similar could happen with Colombo Port City, where China's influence could increase if Sri Lanka struggles financially. Another issue is whether Sri Lanka will truly benefit from this investment or if China will be the main winner. Much of the construction work has been carried out by Chinese companies, and many of the businesses expected to set up in Colombo Port City could be Chinese firms rather than international investors. Some fear that this will limit the benefits for local Sri Lankans, as profits may flow back to China instead of boosting Sri Lanka's economy. Beyond economics, there are also concerns about Sri Lanka's sovereignty and political influence. Sri Lanka may find itself politically tied to China's interests. This could affect its relationships with other global powers, including India and Western countries, which have already expressed concerns about China's growing control in the region. Despite these concerns, Sri Lanka's government remains committed to the project, believing that it will bring long-term economic growth. Whether Colombo Port City becomes a success story or another case of debt dependency remains to be seen. If completed, this island could change Sri Lanka's future. But what impact will it have? Colombo Port City is one of the most ambitious projects in Sri Lanka's history, and its success could transform the country's economy. The project is expected to create thousands of jobs both during construction and after completion. In industries such as finance, real estate, hospitality and retail, the government hopes that the island will attract multinational companies, turning Colombo into a global financial hub like Dubai or Singapore. If successful, this could bring billions of dollars in foreign investment, boosting Sri Lanka's struggling economy. Tourism is another key area of growth, with luxury hotels, casinos and waterfront attractions. Port City is designed to be a major tourist destination. Sri Lanka already relies heavily on tourism and this project could bring in high spending visitors, further strengthening the economy. The island's strategic location between Asia, the Middle East and Africa also makes it an attractive destination for international business travelers. However, not everyone believes this project will benefit all Sri Lankans. One major concern is economic inequality. While the project promises economic growth. Critics argue that it primarily benefits wealthy investors and large corporations rather than ordinary Sri Lankans. High-end residential areas and business districts may cater only to elites, leaving little room for affordable housing or opportunities for the general population. Many fear that Port City could deepen the gap between rich and poor rather than lifting the country as a whole. Another issue is displacement. Local fishing communities who have depended on the surroundings water for generations worry that the project will disrupt their childhoods. Some residents Residents also fear that land prices will rise so much that they will be pushed out of their own neighborhoods. Despite these risks, Colombo Port City has the potential to reshape Sri Lanka's future. If the government manages the project well, ensuring transparency, fair economic policies and environmental protection, it could turn Colombo into a key player in global finance and trade. A well-regulated financial hub could attract international banks, tech companies and investors looking for a strategic location in South Asia. If successful, this project could position Sri Lanka as a rising economic powerhouse. Colombo Port City is a bold vision, but it has also sparked significant controversy. One of the biggest concerns comes from environmental activists who argue that the project could cause long-term damage to Sri Lanka's coastline. The land reclamation process required massive amounts of sand dredging from the seabed, which scientists warn could disrupt marine life and harm local ecosystems. Beyond environmental issues, there are serious concerns about the project's financial and political transparency. Many critics argue that the decision-making process has lacked public input, leaving Sri Lankan citizens in the dark about key financial agreements. The deal between Sri Lanka and China, which funded much of the project through the Belt and Road Initiative, has led to fears of economic dependency. Some worry that Sri Lanka may struggle to repay its debt, potentially giving China greater influence over the country's economy and policies. Another major issue is corruption and unequal distribution of benefits. Large-scale developments often promise job creation and economic growth, but critics argue that most of the profits will go to wealthy investors rather than the average Sri Lankan. There is skepticism about whether the project will truly 
provide opportunities for local businesses or whether it will primarily serve foreign corporations looking for tax benefits. Some reports suggest that land ownership rules in the port city may favor foreign companies, raising concerns about Sri Lanka's sovereignty over the new territory. The government has promised regulations to ensure fair economic participation, but many remain doubtful. There is also uncertainty about whether the island will actually attract the level of investment needed for success, while the government promotes it as Sri Lanka's future financial hub. Experts question whether global companies will choose Colombo over more established business centers like Singapore and Dubai. Political instability, fluctuating economic policies, and concerns about governance could make investors hesitant. Additionally, Sri Lanka's recent economic crisis has further weakened confidence, making it unclear whether the country is in a position to sustain such an expensive project. With these controversies in mind, the future of Colombo Port City remains uncertain. Supporters see it as a transformative project that could boost Sri Lanka's economy, while critics fear it could deepen the country's financial struggles. So will this $15 billion island save Sri Lanka or sink it further into crisis? Colombo Port City's success depends on attracting foreign businesses and investors. The government hopes to turn it into a major financial hub by offering tax benefits and relaxed regulations. However, competition is tough, with cities like Dubai and Singapore already established as financial centers. Investors will need confidence in Sri Lanka's ability before committing. If successful, the city could expand with more skyscrapers, business districts, and better transport links, including a light rail system. It could become a key economic zone, boosting Sri Lanka's economy and reducing its debt. But if the project fails, the consequences could be serious. A lack of investors might leave the city unfinished, turning it into an expensive burden. Sri Lanka, already in financial trouble, could struggle with debt and might have to sell parts of the island to foreign buyers. Will Colombo Port City turn Sri Lanka into a global powerhouse? Or is it a risky bet that could backfire? Leave your thoughts in the comments.